Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. I um, want to be sure and say this first. If you hadn't, haven't subscribed yet, please do. And when you do, please click on the little notification bell, which will be notifying you every time we put up a new video. Okay, on to more exciting things. We are working. Um, I'd like to say I'm working like mad on this thing, but I'm not. I'm kind of like a little bit mad not to be working on it because I'm really, I'm waiting for my front end. But, so I decided to go through some boxes and get some junk out. Some of it really is junk too. And see what I have in the way of leakage and pedals and things like that. Um, I did set the transmission in place. I will be cleaning and polishing it up. It's not very clean right now after laying around for about 30 years. But I did put all new bearings in it and a new sprocket on it and all that before I put it away. So as I recall, it's a real nice transmission. Basically a stock transmission does not have close ratio gear set or anything, just stock. Which is probably ideal because I've got the whole thing geared so high with a huge transmission sprocket and the belt drive I want to use and the tall tire profile I want to use that's going to gear this motor real high. So by using a stock gear set in the transmission, it will give me a nice low gear to get this thing rolling down the road. Because I'm really more interested in long range traveling with it, keeping the RPM level down, as we've discussed with gear ratios in the past. Okay, so I've been looking around and coming up with pedals and things. Uh, this is a suicide clutch pedal I may be using. I also found out I'm going to need to helicoil all of these, all of these holes here. And that's okay. We will put new threads in them. Maybe we'll do that on the YouTube channel so that people can get used to doing those things. I'm trying to think of things to show that are things a person needs to know to build this kind of stuff. It's not rocket science. It's really not. But anyway, I've been coming up with linkage for the rear brake. I'm probably going to replace this old beat up rod. But by getting it in place, I see everything that I'm going to need. And so I think in the last video, we showed the cross shaft for the brake. You can see now how it functions by pulling a little lever on the right side with the brake pedal. It moves the shaft, which moves this link, which pulls this rod and this arm, which actuates the rear brake. So I'm just trying to get all those things in place, even though I'm going to probably re replace most of, if not all of them. So that's what I've been doing. Um, did Let's see, I did the uh, clutch setup here I'm looking at and trying to make up my mind whether I want to use a suicide pedal on a peg or possibly even a rocker clutch like on baby doll on my pan head and I'm thinking about using floorboards which I think will be fun maybe some square ones anyway moving right along to the other side I went through a whole bunch of brake pedals and I came up with a couple of really nice originals here. And so we've got that starting to happen here. And I found out I had a brake rod here put away that's stainless steel. Getting these pieces all out and ready to go. Now the thing that's been holding me up more than anything, oh, here's something else I wanted to show. This is something really cool. I've had put away for years, like so many things here. And this is what I have. This is a Harley Davidson parts box. It's from the AMF days, so it's actually, the box is from 1969 or newer, because it says AMF on the box. But this is a genuine Harley Davidson kickstand bracket. And it's brand new. And I'm going to put it on here. So that's one of the... Th I just wanted to show that off. That's this, this is me telling you I'm cool because I've got one of these. And it's brand new and it's in its original box. 
and I'm really pleased that I've saved it all these years for this special project. Okay, what's really been irritating me, and I don't mean to say it's been irritating me, the guys that are doing it are such great guys, but I haven't gotten my front end back yet. So I'm still waiting for it, and I'm getting impatient, which is my problem, no one else's. But what I wanted to say is, is it's a VL front end. I can't remember how big the stem is on the VL front end. VL front ends, as I've shown and we've talked about before, were built from 1930 to 1936 for the VL models. And the VL models were big flatheads. But they used a big stem on their forks. It was well over a one inch stem. I don't remember if it's inch and a quarter or what it is. But the really, there's ways to adapt the frame and all that. Mine was, I'm having the work done on the front end anyway. These guys are set up with the proper jigs to do the job. And so I asked them to go ahead and put a one inch stem on it. Well, based on the fact that I'm doing that, I'm also going to use modern bearings in, this, in the front end. Now, when you buy these bearing cups like these, they, you press them into the frame. And I don't like that. I mean, what I don't like about it is the fact that if I press them in and, and mock up the whole bike, and then when I want to paint the frame or powder coat the frame or whatever I want to do with the frame, I have to take them out again or mask them. And then when I'm all done with the frame getting all cosmetically beautiful, then putting it together again, pressing them in. What I decided to do, and I don't think this is an original idea, but it's a great idea, is to turn them down so they slide in and out. In other words, instead of buying one pair, buy two pair. And take one pair and get it all made up so that it can slide in and out. And I didn't do this on a lathe, I did it on my belt sander. And all I did was turn it down so it'll slide into the frame for mock-up purposes. The final pair I'll put in there will be a brand new pair that I have not touched this surface on and it'll have to be pressed into the frame. That was my point. So now I have a pair to work with. I bought a pair of those and I bought bearings and races and I'll have this extra pair in my toolbox for any time I want to put a bike together. I've done this in the past. I don't know where the extra pair went. But when you buy these, you get them with bearings or without bearings, with the, bearings pre with the bearing races pressed in or not. I bought them the least expensive way. I bought all the pieces and I press the races into the cup. So what I did, and I'm going to go over here by my Arbor Press. Here is a brand new cup, and this one, as you can see, I turned down on the, uh, on the belt sander so that it will slide into the frame. Now, I'm not going to put the motorcycle together for the final build with these. That would not be safe. They will be pressed in. They will be another set that I have. But right now, we want to put the bearing race into this cup. So here is the new bearing race. And we'll put a little grease on it. My little bearing packer here always has grease in it. This is a tool for pressing in bearing races or seals. And we're going to get that about as straight as we, we can get it by hand. <laughs> Not very, huh? Now that's pretty straight. So we're going to set it right there. And 
And that's how complicated that is. And there is the bearing race in the bearing cup. For anyone who wonders how you get them in there, I could have done that with a hammer, I suppose. But it's really nice to have an arbor press to do it. I'm going to go back over by the bike. And the reason for that is to show how this is going to work. I can put it just like that. Put the stem of the new frame in there with the bearings. And still take it apart later to finish the frame. Speaking of finishing the frame, I'm getting all kinds of words from people about that. Telling me how I should do it. I'd be offended to be told what to do, except that some of the ideas have been pretty good and some of them have been really along the lines of what I think. So I'm going to do a little research on paint, see what's available to do the job, because people are saying, Mike, you don't want to powder coat it. It won't look old style like if you painted it. So maybe I'll paint it. That's really the way I see things. On my little panhead baby doll, when I put her motor in her, I kept looking at all the scratches on the frame and didn't want to take the time to tear her down and have her powder coated. Finally, I said, how would an old guy have done this years ago? He had gone to the store and gotten a paintbrush and a little can of black paint, and I painted it by hand. And, you, and there's no brush strokes in it. I practiced and practiced until I got it right, and it came out really neat. So I'm thinking of, of spraying this, but Anyway, jury's still out on how we're going to do it. Another thing I wanted to mention, I think this is real important. I had a guy write into the comment section and he said, I want to use original parts, and used parts are just fine, but I want original parts. Where can I get some? There aren't any swap meets around here. You know, the big deal is you get on the internet. You type in what it is you want, and different people that have it, it'll come up. And when you start doing business with people, after a while, you start making friends with them. And it's just the same as going to a swap meet or going out to your neighborhood store or anything else. The relationships that have to be built and they have to be built on the internet because that's what we have nowadays. And I must say, you and I are building a relationship. We're doing it on the internet. We're doing it on YouTube. And I really appreciate the comments. And I read them all and I try to answer every one of them. So, I think that's it for today. And we'll see you out on the road.